I mean, do you have an expectation, do the banks you talk to have an expectation that if she's elected president, she's going to double down? You know, it's speculative at this point in time. I know that banks have to plan long term uh, for the business cycle and elections play some role in that business cycle. I suspect that most of the banks, so long as they have uh, prudent risk management and they manage their balance sheets and portfolios well, are going to be able to withstand uh, different political uh, turns. Well, let's talk about your office. I mean, President Trump campaigned a lot on loosening regulations for big business and for banks. How's that going? Have you made progress at the FDIC? Well, as I mentioned before when we spoke, um, I don't look at it as, as bank deregulation and loosening regulations. What we're trying to do is, after 10 years of post-crisis rules, we're trying to take a look at what's working and what's not working. Where do we have holes in our understanding of how um, systemic risk is being handled and to adjust our rulemakings accordingly. So we have done a number of things at the FDIC, taking a look at the broker deposits at the national rate cap, understanding how banks are handling. This is especially crucial for community banks in and especially for community banks in rural areas uh, and, and uh, in agricultural ar areas. And, and it's something that we are focused on very heavily, understanding where can we do more to right-size our regulatory approach to community banks in particular, but the banking system overall as well. FT has a piece out this morning that UBS is planning a negative interest rate for client deposits over a certain level. Can you imagine a day where that's commonplace in our financial institutions? Well, at this point, see, knowing that some banks are offering over 2% uh, for CDs and even, even savings accounts rates, uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, difficult to imagine a negative interest rate environment uh, for deposit accounts and savings accounts. But, you know, anything is possible. And if that happens, we'll have to take a look and understand its impact on the consumers, the deposit, uh, uh, protect, uh, the deposit insurance fund, and also uh, uh, protection of the uh, systemic risk and financial stability concerns as well. Finally, Yelena, uh, big banks like Capital One just this week uh, proved vulnerable to a hack attack. 100 million people's information exposed. How vulnerable is our banking system? So at this point in time, um, I can't comment about Capital One in particular or any other banks. I can tell you that we're taking a look at cybersecurity at our banks very carefully. We're taking a look at how they protect uh, uh, personally identifiable information. And we have IT exams where we focus on those specific issues and topics to understand their framework and to understand uh, whether or not they are taking appropriate measures to safeguard consumer information. Uh, the, the, the breach that happened um, happened, and uh, it's something that um, unfortunately more and more corporations, including financial institutions, are exposed to. Um, as you know, some government agencies have breaches as well. Um, and, and generally, there is an, there's an emphasis uh, in this uh, era on protecting consumers and protecting cyber information as much as we can for both government agencies, for financial institutions and corporations in general. I guess what I'm wondering, to Jamie Dimon's point in his April shareholder letter, he said that uh, basically cybersecurity may be the biggest threat to the U.S. financial system. Are banks more vulnerable to the rest of the economy right now to cyber hacks? It is a tremendous risk to our financial institutions. and. Uh, the, our financial institutions are aware of that risk. They are investing, as you know, billions of dollars in uh, cybersecurity and IT systems. In fact, some of the banks are investing so much money in uh, their IT networks that their um, budget for, for IT and cybersecurity is higher than that of the uh, operating budget of the FDIC. Having said that, um, we are asking our institutions to, uh, requiring them, in fact, to safeguard customer information to safeguard their systems. There are billions of transactions every day, financial transactions in the United States. And uh, every, any one of those transactions can expose a company to um, hackers and vulnerability uh, in their IT framework. So it's something that we take seriously. I know banks take it seriously. And we will certainly continue to focus on examining our banks to make sure that consumers are protected.